Hi, I'm Dr. David Clark. If you've just been diagnosed with Hashimoto's, you may be kind of freaked out, you may be kind of scared, wondering, what does this mean? What do I do? And I don't know if any doctor has explained to you what I'm going to explain today, but I think it's really going to be helpful for you. I'm going to be talking about what Hashimoto's means, the spectrum of Hashimoto's, uh, what your choices are, should you be worried about things. I'm going to try to give you kind of a crash course in uh, being a Hashimoto's patient, and I'm going to teach you how to be proactive, not reactive, because that can be very dangerous. So let's get into it. So if we start with the basics, and I don't know if your doctor who diagnosed you explained this to you, but Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition. Now what that means most basically is that your immune system is attacking the inside of your thyroid gland, and it's attacking one or both of the following things. There's this enzyme that's called thyroid peroxidase, and you use that to make thyroid hormones. And then the other thing is called thyroglobulin, which you use to make thyroid hormones. So if your immune system makes antibodies, okay, which are like little post-it notes, if you make a bunch of antibodies for thyroid peroxidase or a bunch of antibodies for thyroid globulin, well, that meets the criteria for Hashimoto's. And what usually happens over time is if when you've got all these antibodies that's directing your immune system to kill these things in your thyroid gland, is you, over time you become unable to make enough thyroid hormones and then you become hypothyroid. But I'm going to stop right there and tell you that there's kind of different phases and flavors of Hashimoto's. I call it a Hashimoto's spectrum. And if we start way over here on the left, the first phase is what we call euthyroid Hashimoto's. And that's when you've got the antibodies are elevated or positive, but your TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, or your free T4 are not abnormal. It's just the antibodies. That's called euthyroid Hashimoto's. And a good chunk of people that have euthyroid Hashimoto's nothing ever happens to them, right? The antibodies are there, but 20, 30 years goes by and nothing else goes on with their thyroid, but other things can be going on with their immune system because it's really important to understand this, that all you have to have is these elevated antibodies that, and that's telling us that your immune system is out of whack. And once your immune system is doing that, there's lots of other problems that can occur, even if your TSH is never too high and your T4 and free T4 are never too low, right? That's the first thing to understand. So after you thyroid, you get what's called subclinical hypothyroid. And that's kind of weird sounding, but basically what that means is that in the Hashimoto's, right, you've got the antibodies, your TSH is elevated, which is abnormal, but your free T4 is normal. That's called subclinical, right? Now you can still have symptoms. You can have symptoms of hypothyroidism with euthyroid. You can have symptoms of hypothyroidism with subclinical. What are those symptoms? Well, classically, there's things like weight gain, even though you're doing your best to not gain weight. Uh, you can become insulin resistant, hair loss, right? Usually diffuse, uh, sometimes the outer third of your eyebrows, some type of GI problem, could be constipation, could be diarrhea, could be lots of different heartburns. You can have anxiety and depression, joint and muscle pain, right? And the thing is, those symptoms usually start about seven years before you finally get diagnosed with Hashimoto's. Now, some women get diagnosed hypothyroid in that seven years, but it usually takes seven years to finally get diagnosed with, oh, you have Hashimoto's. But it's kind of weird because when endocrinologists do that test for the thyroid antibodies, even if it comes out abnormal and positive, they don't do anything different. Uh, basically, the only thing that they do is either prescribe levothyroxine or Synthroid because you can't make enough T4, which is good, that's fine, like you need that. But they don't do anything for this whole immune system autoimmune thing. And that's probably the main reason I'm making this video is you need to understand that you have an autoimmune problem. And it is a big deal for a couple of different reasons we're gonna get to. All right, so we've got euthyroid Hashimoto's, subclinical Hashimoto's, and then you can have overt hypothyroidism, meaning your TSH is too high, your T4 is too low, and you need to be taking thyroid hormones. Now, Hashimoto's is the number one cause of hypothyroidism. Okay, number one, right? Nine out of 10 people, that's what they got, right? So those are the different uh, flavors of it. And again, the typical sort of Hashimoto's patient story that I've heard over the last 20 years is you're having some of these symptoms I mentioned. You go see your primary care doctor. Maybe they run a thyroid panel, maybe they don't. Eventually you get referred to an endocrinologist who does the uh, thyroid peroxidase antibodies or the, the TSH and they go, oh my gosh, you're hypothyroid. Here's levothyroxine, here's Synthroid. There's nothing else you can do. Uh, we'll come back in a couple of months, and if your TSH and your T4 are normal, you're fixed. Now, I will just tell you, 
if that's your case, as I'm going to talk about in a second, then you're one of the lucky ones because the vast majority of people, I think, that have Hashimoto's, that take the hormones away as supposed to, whose TSH ends up being normal and whose T4 ends up being normal, they still don't feel good, right? They still have some of the problems I mentioned earlier, the joint and muscle pain, the anxiety, the depression, brain fog, right? And it's important now to bring up this. There's only two kinds of thyroid problems, right? And it's really important you know this right out of the gate. You can have what's called a quantity problem and you can have a usage problem. Now, the blood tests that you take, the TSH, the T4, that can tell you how many hormones are floating around, but those tests cannot tell you if you're using them, right? So this idea that we're just gonna look at the TSH and just look at the T4, and as soon as those are within the reference range, you're fixed, that's not how it works. In reality, that is not how it works. Because the other problem you can have is a usage problem, right? And usage of thyroid hormones that you either, either you're taking them or making them on your own, that depends on your thyroid hormone receptors. And those receptors are on the inside, inside the nuclei of your cells. And they're waiting for T3 to come by and dock and then tell the DNA of that cell, whatever it is, what to do. The problem is those receptors can be blocked or blunted or can generally malfunction. And the number one thing that does that is cytokines or inflammation. Cytokines are immune system messengers. And guess what? Hashimoto's can do both things. It can create the quantity problem that you can then fix by taking thyroid hormones, but the usage problem, right? Because Hashimoto's is inflammatory. Autoimmune conditions are inflammatory. So you can have normal looking TSH, normal looking T4, but not be feeling or functioning like they're normal, right? So you now have essentially two choices now that I've given you those pieces to work with, right? You've just been diagnosed Hashimoto's. Now you can take the levothyroxine or Synthroid and you know, you can just see how you do for a couple of months and look, and if in a couple of months you feel 100% better, then you really are one of the lucky ones, right? And, and there's not much else to do in that choice. The other path though is to be proactive because there's a lot of things that people aren't going to tell you until it's kind of too late. And there are some dietary changes that you could probably make right now that could save you a lot of pain and suffering. Uh, I'm kind of not going to get into exactly why, except to say that these there's some foods that cross react <laughs> with thyroid peroxidase antibodies. And so if you eat them, you're probably going to get more attack on your thyroid. You're going to get more inflammation, right? So what are your two choices? One, just take the thyroid hormone, see how you do. I mean, that's great. And if you do wonderful and you're hundred percent better, awesome. But the second choice is to be proactive. So what that means is you got to take action now and you're going to have to work with a doctor that understands the following things, right? Number one, you got to find a doctor who understands that there's only two kinds of thyroid problems that we just talked about. You have to under, find a doctor who understands these things called the, what I call the four priorities. Now, granted, they're my priorities, but they're four priorities and I'll just put them on the screen here. And what these are, these are the kind of metabolic questions that for every Hashimoto's patient, we need to answer, especially if it's a patient that's having symptoms, right? If it's someone with brain fog, anxiety, depression, weight gain, infertility, we need to find out and answer these questions. Number four, do they have any gastrointestinal or liver problems? Well, they could have dysbiosis. They could have a candida problem. They could have a parasite. Not everybody does, but you need to be able to know, work with a doctor who knows when do we test for that? How do we interpret that? If I find something, you know, how do I get rid of it? Uh, number three and number two on the list really deal with energy production. Now we're talking more about cellular energy, right? Because all cells have to make energy for themselves in order to be able to live. And so in here, we've got to talk about things like you get your doctor that you're working with is going to have to understand what is insulin resistance? What is reactive hypoglycemia? How does the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis figure into this? In terms of priority number two, we're talking about anemias and red blood cells. And do you have enough of them? And are they the right size? And the nutrients that go into that, like B12 and folic acid and iron, and then mitochondria, right? The things that actually make the ATP. How, what tests do we do to evaluate all that? And if we find something wrong, what do we do, right? A lot of stuff to know. And then lastly, the priority list there, the number one is phenotype, immunophenotype. And this is huge. This is massive. Okay. Because if you have Hashimoto's, we already know that you have an autoimmune problem. But what we don't know is what is your immune system doing in your case of Hashimoto's. Now, how we find that out, how I do that, and I, I would recommend you find someone that knows how to do this, is you do what's called immunophenotyping. 
Uh, and that means doing a test called a comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotype. It's basically getting your immune system fingerprinted. And it lets us look very specifically at what is your immune system doing, right? It's a direct measurement of your immune system. Uh, so like it looks at T cells and B cells and TH1. And by measuring these things, I'll just give you an example. Like in this patient here that you see who has Hashimoto's, you can see that that marker is high. And then this next little bit of marker is high. And now that I know that, I can go after that specifically and normalize it and bring it back into normal to help uh, regulate her immune system. But I don't know that's the problem unless I do the test. Her diagnosis of Hashimoto's is really just a label. It doesn't tell me what her immune system is actually doing, right? Uh, you can give me a hundred people that have the diagnosis of Hashimoto's. They've all got their own fingerprint. Well, they've all got their own immunophenotype as well. So I, I think that's crucial. I think it's critical that you're working with someone that understands that. Uh, the other immune system thing is uh, how to do multiple tissue antibody testing because if you've got one autoimmune problem, the problem is you probably have another one as well. So you need to be looking for these other ones. And of course, by doing multiple tissue antibody testing, we can also find out about food cross reactions. I'm not going to worry about food sensitivity testing because that's a waste of time, right? So again, you have two choices. Do nothing except take the hormone, see how you do, or start being proactive and find a doctor that knows all this stuff and start taking action now. And then the other thing you have to find a doctor is find a doctor who can take the time necessary to do this stuff because you're not going to be able to have a five minute, uh, you know, insurance doctor visit and be able to get this kind of care done. It's not going to happen. I mean, no, not trying to throw any of those guys under the bus, but they just don't have time to do it. So you're going to have to work with someone that has engineered their practice in order to be able to take the time that, it ne that is necessary to be a detective to figure out what's going on in your case. And what I mean by that is there is no cookie cutter protocol. You know, when you have like a five minutes to talk to someone, you have to go on shortcuts, right? And you go, oh, well, here's the page where we do the 10 things for Hashimoto's patients. That's not how it works in the real world, right? Uh, you need to work with someone that has developed their practice around the idea of taking time to be a good detective, to leave no stone unturned, but doing it smartly and efficiently and hopefully someone that has experience. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. So if you've been newly diagnosed with Hashimoto's, you do have to worry about your autoimmune problem expanding because it can do that. Once you have one autoimmune problem, you can have another. I've got other case studies and other videos that explain that. But it doesn't have to happen that way if you start being proactive right now. So you have to work with someone that understands there's two kinds of thyroid problems. There's quantity problems and usage problems. What affects those receptors? What are the four priorities? How do we test for those? How do we assess your immunophenotype and what are we going to do about it? And how are we going to know that we're doing a good job? And I hope you uh, found this helpful and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.